Lake Merritt. This 140-acre body of water, enclosed in the heart of urban Oakland, is surrounded by parks and city neighborhoods. The lake's 3.5 mile perimeter attracts all sorts of recreation, such as biking, walking, jogging, and other sorts of activities. In 1870, Lake Merritt was made the first official wildlife sanctuary in the United States, providing a safe haven for various birds and land animals. Over 4,000 migratory birds make their home here annually. Because of its biological diversity, the lake is an ecological center for many animals that inhabit the area. At a glance, this beautiful lake is seemingly pristine, but upon further inspection, one can see its true nature. Up to 6,000 pounds of trash can be found in the lake monthly. Despite water cycling through tides and storm drain input, the trash degrades the water quality, disrupting the massive food web and overall oxygen level of the lake. Thus, the trash handicaps thousands of aquatic animals such as shrimps, fish, mussels, copepods, and various populations of land animals and birds surrounding the lake. Dr. Richard Bailey, Executive Director of the Lake Merritt Institute, has been dedicated to improving Lake Merritt since 1992. Dr. Uh, Ken Finger, UC Berkeley studies microscopic animals that live in the bottle and he sampled Lake Merritt. He thinks the large area of Lake Merritt is actually a dead zone because of low oxygen. Lake Merritt has a watershed of about seven square miles, uh, 4,650 acres, it's all drained down into the lake from the city of Oakland and the entire city of Piedmont. Uh, several sub watersheds, Glen Echo Creek comes down. Uh, uh, Trestle Glen Creek comes into the lake. Uh, these creeks generally go underground into what we call storm drains, big pipes underground. And as you get closer to the lake, more and more drains come in, feed into the system, and uh, the pipes get larger and larger and finally empty out into the lake. 62 storm drains come into Lake Merritt uh, all the way around from the seven square mile watershed. And the trash mainly is carried in from the watershed. Uh, anything on the street that's dropped and gets into a storm drain, uh, it's going to end up in Lake Merritt. It's, it's garbage in, garbage out. Well, it comes from litter bugs, um, the people that throw things on the street. We've been doing this for about uh, over 10 years now, and we find that in the months where we have rain, uh, at least an inch or, or, or so, we'll get three, four, five, six thousand, up to 9,000 pounds of trash. In the months that we don't get rain, uh, in the summer, you know, a tenth of an inch or less, the, the amount of trash we pick up falls off to uh, maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred pounds. So what that tells us is the rain brings the trash in. The, uh, the remaining fifteen hundred pounds is what I call hand thrown and wind blown. Uh, we get that even on months when there's no rain, just from people walking around the lake dropping things and the wind blows it in, or they deliberately throw it into the lake. So it's, it's mainly uh, rain on the watershed, washing stuff from litter bugs coming directly. Companies, construction sites, and civilians pour pollutants such as oil, soap, and paint into the storm drain, thinking that they disappear into a sewer system to get treated. Since the storm drain water isn't filtered, treated, or processed in any way, these fluids and other trash flow directly into Lake Merritt. Runoff has several effects on the lake. Trash gets to the bottom of the lake, it breaks down, it uses up oxygen, and degrades water quality quite a bit. 
It decreases the pH level to a point that negatively affects all life in the lake. Common pollutants such as soap, oil, and paint all decrease the water's quality. It promotes the growth of bacteria, causing a decrease of oxygen in the water and a foul stench in the air around the lake. The overall water quality is decreasing to a point where it noticeably affects the livelihood of the animals. Even though Lake Merritt itself cycles water through tidal flow, the water that refills the lake contains urban runoff. This means that the lake is refilling with contaminated, polluted water with a significant level of chronic toxicity. We found uh, you know, several dead birds that have been you know, died because of, of uh, feeding rubber bands, things like that. We found several you know, fish that have died, uh, hard to say make a direct correlation to trash. Um, we do know that uh, what we don't collect here will eventually wash out into San Francisco Bay and out in the ocean if it's, if it's floating. Uh, we have a, a number of small species of fish here. A lot of animals that live at the bottom of the lake in the mud, uh, I think, are, are affected pretty dramatically. The number of animals eat plastic, 160 species of animals are known to eat plastic. They can't tell the difference between plastic and food. They, many of them don't have taste buds. Uh, so a lot of birds will, uh, will eat styrofoam, like this, this um, styrofoam plate here was pecked at and partly eaten by birds. Uh, other animals ingest uh, things like rubber bands. They think they're worms or something like that. Uh, whales have been known to eat so much plastic that they've died or and they found them washed up on beaches. So there's quite an effect on, uh, on on animals as well.